What did Mel Tucker have to say at Media Day? Is Xavier Booker inching closer to commitment for Michigan State basketball? Who boy. And also, hey, how would we spend the $1 billion Mega Millions jackpot all on Michigan State football? Yep, another fun one. Let's go. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The greatest and most beautiful people of all time. Yes, I am talking about you, wonderful, wonderful folks. Yes, the listeners and viewers of Locked on Spartans, thank you so much for joining us to kick off your day. Or, hey, you know, let's just call it kicking off your weekend, why don't you? And before going any further, uh, yeah, uh, just massive news. I know that this is going to alter your life 100%, but next week. Next week is when we start five days a week of shows. That's right, in June and July. We did three days a week, but mm -mm, August might as well be football season because we are rolling out five days a week, Monday through Friday, here on the Locked on Spartans podcast or YouTube show, any way you consume this media, uh, and any way you do uh, listen to this voice. Thank you very much. Please rate, review, subscribe, uh, comment below. Do whatever you got to do. And also, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or you have a winning golf bet for this weekend's Rocket Mortgage Classic, hey, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. That's right. I'm wearing my uh, Sparty golf hat right now. Support to uh, Ryan Brem. He is a former Spartan golfer playing in the Rocket Mortgage Classic. So if you are tooling around Detroit Golf Club at all this weekend, like I will be on Sunday, go give Ryan some support. Come on. Spartans uh, cheering on Spartans here. All right. Before the Rocket Mortgage Classic uh, teed off, we uh, had some football things happening down in Indianapolis. Yet yeah, it is the Big Ten Media Days. Woo! That's right, baby. All right. Um, I'll just say this right now. Uh, Mel Tucker, not the most exciting guy in front of the media. And what I mean by that is, like, he doesn't say much that gets any sizzle. And that's not a knock. That is just fine with me. Um, we can see what happens to coaches when they speak a little too much of their mind, when they are feeling themselves a little too much. Yes, I'm talking about uh, Jim Harbaugh. And any way you would feel about that whole um, topic that he's talking about, I, I'd be a, a, a silly person to have that debate right now. Just kind of crazy to float those out there in the public, uh, especially when, you know, you kind of got to recruit some kids from different backgrounds. I digress. Or if you're like Pat Narduzzi and you use your airtime to talk about how you would win hypothetically if your quarterback that didn't play played in a game that you blew an 11-point lead. I, listen, so, yeah, when, when you got coaches uh, whew, taking an interesting strategy during media days, I'm fine with Mel taking it easy here, but we will talk about some quotes. You know, there is some substance that he did leave out there on the podium that we will get into, and uh, you know, why, why not just jump into it right now? So, in front of the lovely media contingent that Michigan State rolls with, and the Big Ten as well, uh, Mel Tucker had an opening statement, and part of that opening statement, I'm just going to rip off a snippet right here. A year ago last season, we finished 11-2. and two. For us, it was really just a step in the right direction. We did some good things, but nobody cares what you did last year. We certainly don't. We've got a lot of work to do. We have improved tremendously this offseason on the field and off the field. So, I, I mean, also, I, I can't read these quotes and also not, you know, laugh a little bit because, like, what is Mel going to say? Like, yeah, 11-2 is great, and I'm going to be honest, we're – we're going to be a little hungover walking into next season, uh, just thinking about our great Peach Bowl win that we got uh, last December. No, I, of course he's going to say that season's behind us moving forward, but I, I'm, I'm a sucker for it. Like, I, I get fired up. I eat every single drop of these quotes. Improvement in the offseason. Yes, of course he has to say that, but I, yeah, I was having a conversation with someone earlier today, and they wanted us to uh, – you know, they're talking in a group chat, and they wanted us to say, hey, someone says that Michigan State can get 10 wins. I'm arguing against them. Can you help me out here? When we get to late July, early August, I always think our floor is 10 wins. And it's quotes like this, too, that really just have 
me going. Uh, oh, the wheels are spinning. The the delusion is here. I'm delirious. I'm ready for some Spartan football. So let's get into some more quotes. Enough about me and how I'm feeling about the upcoming season and the excitement around it. So like I said earlier, and like we you know made fun of him earlier this week for, uh, Pat Narduzzi, of course, the coach at Pitt, the former defensive coordinator for Michigan State, he double and triple downed saying that, hey, if Kenny Pickett played in the Peach Bowl, uh, that's a 21-point swinger. For a backup quarterback played, that would have been like a 13.4-point swing. I don't know. He was talking crazy, uh, saying that he could win the Big Ten every single year because he almost beat Michigan State, which is one of the best Big Ten teams. Never mind that Western Michigan beat Pitt, so I uh, can assume that he thinks that Western Michigan would win the ACC every year. Whatever, uh, you know, someone tried to get Mel Tucker to bite on those comments, and uh, Mel keeps it pretty simple, which is what you probably should do at media days. K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. He writes, he writes, he says, rather, I'd prefer not to get into hypotheticals, especially with games that were in the past and decided on the field. Okay, nip that in the bud pretty quick there. Uh, no more drama coming from the Michigan State side of this whole saga, and I highly doubt anything else is going to come out from Pitt unless someone else wants to shove a microphone in Pat or Doozy's face because, wow, I've, yeah. He... Don't let things get to your head uh, often, you know, especially in, in the world of coaching, but Pat or Doozy is one head coach that really, really is uh, stretching the mile on that watered-down ACC Uh, Title Eddie won last year. I digress. Let's move on. Uh, Coach Tucker also asked about how his team improved from that tumultuous 2-5 and season, of course, during the COVID year, to an outstanding 11-2 and in just one year. And he points to turnover margin and the ability to run the ball. No mystery why Michigan State was allowed to run the ball. They had one of the greatest running backs in the nation, if not the greatest running back in the nation, carrying the lion's share of carries. So, yeah, I don't have to go into that any further. But the turnover margin absolutely positively reason Michigan State was able to go 11-2 and two in between those two years. Back in 2020, yes, it might as well be nine years ago in this brain, uh, Michigan State was turning the ball over nearly three times per game. Nearly three times per game, you could count on the Michigan State Spartans coughing up the football. And last year, it was kept at 1.3 times per game. So, yeah, two turnovers per game you're shaving off. That's a big difference right there. We'll see if Michigan State can keep on sustaining that. That's a tough number to sustain. But, hey, let's see if we can get it done. And also, uh, Mel Tucker was asked about the pass defense, if he's worried about if there's going to be improvement or anything. And he pretty much said point blank. We could not get much worse than last year. It is quite literally almost impossible for us to get statistically worse than last year in pass defense. So, look, also with the way that they're changing how they coach that position, I think Mel Tucker is taking the cornerbacks under his wing a little more than he did last year. I think we're going to see a lot of improvement from the secondary because of the same reason Mel said, honestly. You can't get much worse than you were last year. Now, on to... Uh, more happy things. Yes, Michigan State got two great transfers in the porthole at the running back position. Talking Jalen Berger, talking Jarek Broussard. He sounded off on both of these athletic running backs. So first he was uh, speaking about Jalen Berger. Quote, so we've gotten to know him over these past several months, and he is a very versatile guy. He's an excellent runner, and he's excellent in terms of receiving the ball out of the backfield. He's a competitor, and I'm glad we got him. Well, if you're glad, I'm glad too, Tuck. Uh, Now, as for Jarek Broussard, quote, he played for us at Colorado when I was there. Tremendous, tremendous back. Also excellent ball skills. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's super hyper competitive. We got him this summer, and he is a guy that can do a lot of things. Now, both of those quotes are fascinating. They're great. They're awesome that we're revving up these guys because no one's going to fill Kenneth Walker's shoes. Not one person, and I don't even know if a committee of two or three guys can duplicate what Kenneth Walker has done. However, one thing that jumped out to me about both those quotes is the ball catching. Yes, that's right. Receiving the ball out of the backfield. All right, he can catch the ball out of the backfield for Jarek Broussard. Kenneth Walker only caught 13 balls out of the backfield last year. That 
really wasn't a staple in Michigan State's offense, having your running back catch the ball out of the backfield. And 13 is a very low number, uh, just to put it in the grand scheme of things. You know, I go back to Le'Veon Bell's senior year, and I think he caught it upwards of 34 times. I might be on or off by two or three either way, but still, that's going to be a a nice wrinkle that Michigan State could add and might have to add. Because I don't even know if it was a thing where Kenneth Walker just wasn't able to catch a ball, or did he just not have to because he was so good? So any way you slice it, That'll be a fun new little thing for the Michigan State offense. And uh, just one more thing, too, uh, that you know Tucker said that I wanted to point out is Tucker on replacing the explosiveness of Kenneth Walker and Jalen Naylor. Quote, we have guys. Guys are going to have to step up, but I'm encouraged by what I see. I don't stay awake at night thinking we don't have enough good players. So if you're a fanatic, uh, a, a Looney Tune like I am, and you are, you are losing sleep about this upcoming season because we are less than 40 days away from kickoff. Uh, Mel Tucker's telling you to not do that because the boys in green and white have got some great athletes, and I, I, don't, I don't blame them either. I don't think that's coach speak. I don't think that's media day speak. The, the weapons Michigan State has around Peyton Thorne, I got a hard time believing, will be an issue. Look, you got Jerick Passar, Jalen Berger that we just talked about. Uh, Davion Prim got a lot of shine, if you will, but the receivers are stacked. Jaden Reed, all right, Montori Foster, Trey Mosley, Keon Coleman, Jeremy Bernard, Antonio Gates Jr., Cade McDonald, uh, Christian Fitzpatrick. You also got Daniel Barker at tight end. What can you do with Harold Joyner? Uh, maybe something. Perhaps it's the same thing you can do with Malik Carr. So, yeah, it, it, it's all going to come down to that offensive line this season. But, God, I'm very excited for this season coming up. And I'm also excited, perhaps, I'm going to – for what may or may not be happening uh, on the recruiting trail for Michigan State basketball, but we will get to that in a hot second. I just got to talk your ear off about betonline.net. Woo! Gang, Rocket Mortgage Classic is going on in Detroit. It is my personal Christmas. I will be there on Sunday, and before I get in my car and make my way down to Detroit Golf Club, well, first of all, I already made a bet uh, before the tournament started on Seth Tigala. That's right, the young gun out of Pepperdine, 35 to 1 on betonline.net. But also, they'll have the live odds throughout the weekend as well. Wake up Sunday morning, see how the leaderboard is, and then place your bet right there. Bet Online's got you taken care of because they are the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for your odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf like we were just talking about, gang. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all the sports wagering information from live in-game betting, sports, and podcasts. Point blank, they got you covered. So head to Bet Online today, use a mobile device, learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online where the game starts. Woo! And before starting our banter about Michigan State basketball recruiting, hey, I just want to thank you for making Locked On Spartans your first listen or watch every single day. Uh, smash that subscribe button, please. Review, comment, do what you got to do to make you happy. You know what? This is about you in the end, so whatever makes you happy, let's do it. And I feel like what we're going to talk about next, I, I keep pounding on wood because I don't want to jinx anything, but like I think it's going to make you, speaking of ha- your happiness, I think this is going to make you happy too. Uh, we talked about it earlier this week. Xavier Booker trims his final colleges list down to 10 programs. And just to go through the 10 really quick, let's let's bang them out right here. Michigan, Auburn, Ohio State, Gonzaga, Purdue, Notre Dame, Indiana, Cincinnati, Oregon, and your Michigan State basketball Spartans. Uh, he did a little interview with On3 here, and he gave, he gave a quote on each team. This is also a free piece on On3. I'm not going behind a paywall and um, putting out their hard work that they did. Um, But this is a quote that he said about Michigan State. He was asked about each program, what he likes, and this is what he had to say about our Spartans. Quote, obviously I have a really good relationship with Coach Izzo, Coach Montgomery, and the rest of the staff. They've been with me for about a year now. They were there for my worst games and my best games, but one thing they never stopped doing was recruiting me. They've always been by my side and gave me feedback in a constructive criticism type of way. They also just stuck with me and checked in on me. 
it has been a completely, not to borrow a term from Mel Tucker, but let me just borrow a term from Mel Tucker, a relentless, relentless recruitment from Tom Izzo and company when it comes to Xavier Booker. They have put so many eggs in this kid's basket. And why? Well, if you don't know Xavier Booker, uh, apologies for, for not bringing this up earlier, but he, he's the, he's a top five recruit in the nation. Any way you slice it, 24 seven sports has him ranked as the number three kid in the country. He's six foot 10. He can do anything you want. He can block shots. He can shoot. He can take the ball up the court. He can take your daughter to prom. He can probably spay or neuter a few dogs or cats for all you know. And he can probably change your brake pads too if you really need it. This kid can do it all. This kid can absolutely positively do it all. But that ranking wasn't always like that. He started in the upper 80s, 90s. He may have even been over 100 ranked in the nation back when Tom Izzo started to recruit him. So when Xavier Booker is saying, they stuck with me the entire way, you ain't kidding. And it's also the same reason why Kansas, Kentucky, or the Dukes of the world aren't on that final 10 list either because they got in on, uh, in on Xavier Booker way too late. Not Izzo. This is a tried and true, I was with you from the beginning, recruitment right here. And also, it's not like Izzo is looking at a lot of other guys, too. Like, sure, Devin Royal, he, he's he's up for commitment as well. We'll talk about him in a hot second. And yes, Michigan State has two other guys taking official visits this weekend. But man, Xavier Booker has dominated the pie chart of Tom Izzo's attention whether that's going to games, whether it's just emphasis on recruiting him. So, yes, this would be massive. Now, why am I talking so much about Xavier Booker? We, we, there, 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 could, there, there could be some good news. There could be some good news. Uh, after Monday's final 10 list dropped, uh, not too long after, Travis Branham of 24-7 Sports logged a crystal ball for Xavier Booker to Michigan State. It was less than three hours after he dropped his final 10 where Travis Branham, who rarely misses, knock on wood, rarely misses, logged his prediction for Xavier Booker to come to Michigan State. Okay, that's just one guy. Oh, or is it just one guy? Because Justin Thind, friend of the program, Justin Thind of 24-7 Sports, a MSU recruiting expert, also logs his crystal ball for Xavier Booker to come to Michigan State no less than 48 hours after Travis made his prediction. There are some guys at On3, another recruiting site, that have predicted Xavier Booker to come to Michigan State. So we got wheels turning. And the way it was said to me by people in the know is that it, 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 it could happen by the time you're listening to this right now. It could have already happened while I'm recording. Or maybe three weeks from now. Perhaps four weeks from now. Maybe if I, the timeline is that he wants to get it done before his senior season. Now, where's that hard date of committing to whatever school he's going to go to? Not sure, but it could be soon. So, yeah, we are on DEFCON 2 right now for uh, for maybe perhaps a commitment. Um, now, it's not a commitment. We're going to change up uh, players that we're talking about right now. We will talk about Devin Royal right now. And it's not a commitment we're on the lookout for with Mr. Royal, but it is a, a trimming of his final schools list as well. On Friday, he will be announcing his top three teams. Uh, you can expect Michigan State to be up there. You can expect Ohio State to be up there. And whoever the third sacrificial lamb is, it's going to be cool to get their logo on the graphic, but I would be floored if it was not Ohio State or Michigan State who he committed to. It's actually very funny, or maybe it's not funny. I'll let you be the judge of this, but I, I talked to one person that's in the know of Devin Royal's uh, recruitment, and the way it was said to me is that he's on the one-yard line of committing to Michigan State. Awesome. Okay, hold on, though, before before you pop the champagne over there. I talked to someone else in the know, too, really dialed into Michigan State recruiting, real dialed into just college basketball recruiting in general. They said that, oh, yeah, things are looking really, really, and I mean really good for Ohio State right now. They probably do expect his commitment sometime in the next few weeks. So, so someone's going to be very right. Someone's going to be very wrong here uh, to where Devin Royal's commitment is going to go, whether it's Columbus or East Lansing. 
or the 0.01% chance it's going to be another school, DePaul maybe, who's to say, but yeah, that is going to be a hotly contested commitment right there. Uh, Devin Royal, four-star kid, six foot seven, reminds me a lot of Malik Hall. Dave Klein, SpartanHoops.com has made that similar comparison as well, but all around great player. Now let's talk quickly about two other great players stepping on East Lansing soil this weekend. These are guys you might not know, and for good reason, they haven't been offered by Michigan State yet because normally they like to do that in person. So I assume that these two gentlemen will get offered by the Spartans when they step onto campus this weekend for visits. The first one is Cohen Carr. He is the number 59 ranked overall recruit per, per 24-7 sports. He is six foot seven, 200 pounds. He's a small forward from South Carolina. And this, this guy's a maniac. He is a bona fide animal. Um, he, he does, his motor is endless. I've never seen a motor like this since. Honestly, like, I know I'm going to go away from Michigan State, but when I think high motor, I always thought of Victor Oladipo for Indiana. Like, he just has that tenacity. He's got that, like, the, the defense of kind of like Brandon Dawson is kind of what I'm feeling. Maybe I need to watch a little more film on him, but I do see a lot of Brandon Dawson in his defensive game, and he just he just attacks in transition. He attacks through the lane on offense, too, so just a brilliant slasher, Cohen Carr, right there. Uh, his, his recruitment starting to pick up a little bit, as you can see, as Michigan State is starting to get on him, too. And then the other gentleman is Garrig Normand, uh, the number 89 overall player in the country, six foot six, shooting forward from Texas. So, uh, and yeah, he can... He can shoot it well. So, wow, six foot six, kid from Texas, also white. If I could throw that in there, this will make sense in a hot second. Shoots it really well. Is that Matt McQuaid's music that I'm hearing right now? Like, that's the very, that's a very easy comparison to make. Um, it's also kind of, it's also kind of true. It's also kind of true. Uh, maybe the only thing different between Garrig and Matt McQuaid is that this Garrig fella. He's got some hops, man. He he can jump out the gym. So yeah, uh, it, it's it's Matt McQuaid with the vertical, kind of is is what I'm feeling here after watching a, a bit of his film earlier today. So it would be a shame if Matt McQuaid, a guy from Texas, was on the staff and could put a bug in his ear that hey, the Texas to Michigan State pipeline is a good way to go. But oh, would you look at that? Matt McQuaid is on the staff, so hopefully that helps us here a little bit. Again. Just like Cohen Carr's recruitment, Garrick Norman's recruitment is starting to pick up a little bit here. So that is the recruiting news that we have on the Michigan State basketball front in a hot second. We'll talk about, well, when I hit the lottery on Friday, how I'm going to spend each and every dollar just on Michigan State football. If you're on the podcast, uh, we got some bills to pay if you're on YouTube. Just a short one to pay, so let's get to it right now. All right. Uh, Mega Millions jackpot is just a, a, a pinch over a cool billion dollars. Uh, the drawing is Friday night. I got some of my numbers right here. And if you're a, a person like me, you just love Michigan State way too much. Uh, of course, you know, I'll, I'll do one ticket with, uh, you know, my, my kid's birthday, wife's birthday, and anniversary date. But that's that's not fun. And this isn't locked on to my personal life. This is locked on Spartan. So let's talk about the fun ticket I usually do, too. It is five, eight. 11, 23, 40 with the gold ball of 16. Now, why those numbers? Well, let's talk about why those numbers. Five for Cassius Winston. Eight for Kirk Cousins. 11 for Drew Neitzel. 23 for Draymond Green. And 40 for Paul Davis. And let's not forget about my sixth favorite Spartan for the gold ball. That's right. That's Aaron Burbridge. So, I encourage you, if you're going out to buy some Mega Millions tickets, make a fun Michigan State one. Or... Throw up uh, the number eight up there, not for Kirk Cousins, but maybe for the amount of Final Fours Tom Izzo has been to. Right? The, the possibilities are endless. You get to pick through numbers one through seventy. So uh, get nuts and best of luck. And, and if you if you hit, let's let's talk. I'm sure we can uh, arrange some sponsorship program. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So good luck to everyone. So with that, let's do the prompt that we have to spend all one billion dollars just on Michigan State football-related things, okay? Um, 
this was an old school project I did in seventh grade. Our math teacher said, all right, you have to spend a million dollars. It has to be on the dot, no more, no less. It's got to be at least like X amount of items. A little fuzzy there, but that's the same kind of prompt we're doing right now. How would we spend a billion dollars on Michigan State football? Let's get into it right now. Uh, I live in Metro Detroit, so for me, a car ride from here to East Lansing on game day is about an hour and 20 minutes, let's call it. And very recently in the news, uh, if you're way too plugged into the internet like I am, there was outrage that I think it was Kylie Jenner or one of the Kardashians, a lot of outrage that she was taking three-minute private jet flights instead of a 45-minute car ride. And you know what? That's really easy to complain about. If you're like me and you're just driving around a base model Equinox, you don't have private jet money. But when private jet money comes, we will be using said private jet money. Sorry, environment, but I'm a billionaire now and that's just how we do things. So I will be buying a Sikorsky S-92 helicopter. Yes, that is a 19-seater to fly me from Metro Detroit to East Lansing. Forget the commute. Uh, Don't. I will not miss you, 696. Me and 19 passengers will be enjoying a flight to East Lansing. So that's how we start tailgating. But I'm not an entirely selfish person. No, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build an indoor football facility. Wait, hold on. Does Michigan State already have one of those? Yes, they do. We're going to build one, though. Uh, probably carve some some uh, area off on Munfield, Field, and it's just going to be for tailgating. Just think of a giant football indoor complex just strictly for tailgating on the turf yes climate controlled we're not going to try to tailgate in the cold weather here and you probably think oh well next has got to be a dome over spartan stadium right if you're going to be such a wuss about the cold like no nah, nah. no i'm never going to put a dome over spartan stadium because uh spartan weather is how we roll just not for tailgating. So let me just blow a cool $25 million on an indoor turf tailgating palace. Um, also, I'm a man of the people. I will be giving everyone a, uh, so to speak, an all-you-can-eat, all-you-can-drink pass in the stadium. We'll call it $100 per person. Split that between Amish pretzels, hot dogs, uh, beer if they ever decide to sell it, hot chocolate. So with the 75,000 people in the, in the stands for all seven games, $100 per person, that's $52.5 million for the upcoming season. Uh, if you are incredibly online and you've been around the message boards for quite some time, one of the biggest inside jokes with Michigan State internet people is the giant Sparty statue hovering over Michigan State with the observation deck Think Statue of Liberty. Yes, we are finally going to erect that statue. I tried to see how much it would cost to build a statue like that, and the best I got was that back in the day, this cost like $400,000 for France to build. With inflation, that means it's somewhere around $13 million, and I read somewhere that it costs $6 million a year these days to keep it renovated and all that stuff. So we'll call that a cool $19 million. All right. And don't worry. We do have a running total at the end here. Uh, The West sideline outside. How nice does that look with the facade, the press box at the top, all the suites at the top. Okay. We're going to do that again, but on the East side of the stadium for a smooth $93 million. That's how much the West side costs with inflation factored in, but also inside there. mm Mm-mm. No, we're not just going to be watching games. It's not going to be a press box on that side. We're going to keep the press box over on the West. Instead, we're going to be putting a sports book uh, up in that East side of the stadium uh, for $20 million. Circa just built a sports book for $20 million. I feel like that's a fair number. So let's say Michigan State's laying the wood on Akron. You want to go in, watch some other games, bet on some other games. Hey, be my guest. Go in there, treat yourself right. But also, when you're going to treat yourself right, Enjoy the 800-foot Lazy River that we have put in for $1.2 million as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, but they got that roller coaster on the top of New York, New York. We will be having a roller coaster on the top of Spartan Stadium, Spartan Stadium. So, And that costs upwards of $30 million to build a brand spanking new roller coaster. So, yes, during kickoff... Imagine you're just in the corkscrew going upside down. Woo, that's uh, one way to end a day of tailgating right there. So, with everything I said for that east sideline renovation, 
We're looking at $114.2 million for the East Side renovation. Um, I am a man of entertainment. I want to be entertained. I know that flyovers are largely a waste of tax money and you know just our hardworking dollars. That's why you're going to be using my lucky dollars here. Uh, they did a flyover for a Super Bowl very recently where all three bombers were in attendance. I don't know. I just read this really quick. I'm not much of a plane guy. All I know is that it looked pretty badass. So we're going to do it. Same flyover, all three bombers at the Super Bowl. It cost roughly $4 million. Well, at every home game, that comes out to a total of $28 million. And also, we're not done with entertainment just at the pregame. Mm-mm. We will be doing halftime shows. Sorry, Spartan Marching Band, you're getting the axe. I'll pay you guys to smooth things over. But uh, for four of the games, we're going to have Kanye West do halftime shows. Uh, and for the other three, just to appease, you know, the older crowd, you know, I do like this music too. Guns and Roses will be doing the other three home game halftime shows as well. The best I could find is that prices start at $1.5 million to hire each of these acts. So multiply that by the seven home games, that's $10.5 million. And oh yeah, I'm going to be a little sleepy after these games. I don't want a helicopter back home. We want to, you know, party somewhere on campus after the game. Found a very nice five-bedroom, seven-bathroom house on Zillow in East Lansing for $1.1 million. That's the end of my list right here. That was a lot of money, a lot of spending. Guys, gals, that only came out to $277.3 million. Everything I just named barely just got over a quarter of what you would win in the lottery before taxes and everything, before the lump sum debate or whatever that is. So I got a lot more money to spend. Uh, so really, I, I hate to do this, but I'm just going to you know use the rest on NIL. Uh, I'm going to hire away Nick Saban. Uh, Kirby Smart is the new defensive coordinator. Lincoln Riley is the offensive coordinator. I will be paying kids to not go to OSU or to Michigan or Penn State or anyone in Michigan State's path. So, yeah, instead of like an NIL fund for Michigan State, I'll also create the first NIL fund to uh, be anti whatever school anyone else is going to go to. So, uh, and I guess any money left over, uh, yeah, winning the lottery is fun, but I'm not done winning there. I, I want to win some more things, so I will just use a bunch of money to buy everyone in the stadium 50 50 tickets for game day. But I still, at the end of the day, get a 95% of the ticket allotment. So, yes, I will be holding thousands upon thousands of tickets while everyone else just has one ticket in their hand. I want to feel the rush of winning. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. So, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, if, if those numbers come up, if 5, 8, 11, 23, 40, gold ball of 16 pops up, well, if you see a helicopter in East Lansing airspace uh, on September 2nd, you know that I stuck to my word and I used Every single dollar of that money on Michigan State football. So, uh, gang, that was a hoot and a half. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode as well. And if you enjoy these episodes, well, I got good news for you. Like we already talked about, we are five days a week, starting next week, going to get into fall camp storylines. We're going to talk with Justin Thin to kick off the week when it comes to football recruiting, basketball recruiting, just picking his brain about a whole lot of stuff. And then also next week, too, We'll start our position breakdowns. We will have an offensive breakdown, a defensive breakdown, but also specifically a quarterback breakdown with Brian Lewerke. So, yes, we do have a lot of fun shows coming up in a action-packed August ahead. Keep it tuned to Locked on Spartans. You guys are the best. Love every single one of you. Let's go. Have a great weekend. Go green. Go green.